Let's do another example of how a lessee would account for a lease under IFRS 16. So in this example, we're going to assume that the lessee's expected residual value is lower than the guaranteed residual value. So let's get to the specifics. So the guaranteed residual value here is $20,000. So the lessee is telling the lessor, listen, at the end of the lease, this thing will be worth at least $20,000. We're guaranteeing it. But the lessee expects that the residual value will only be worth $5,000. So we have a $15,000 shortfall. $20,000 minus $5,000 is $15,000. Now what is going to happen? Well, the lessee has guaranteed that it would be worth $20,000, but they think it's only going to be worth five. dollars So that means if this comes to pass, if it's like, oh, well, actually it is only worth five, dollars the lessee is going to have to pay $15,000 of cash to the lessor to make them whole. Okay. So what we're going to do when we are calculating the lease liability, okay? So when we're calculating the present value of the lease payments, we are going to treat this $15,000 cash shortfall, the, their cash payment for the shortfall at the end of the lease, we're going to treat this as a final lease payment. And we're going to discount it to its present value. And it's going to be included in the initial measurement of the lease liability, okay? So basic facts of the lease, uh, January 1st, 20 sec, uh, 2022 is the first day of the lease term. It's also the first day a payment is made. Payments are $100,000 a year uh, for three years. Now, the lessee happens to know the lessor's implicit interest rate, so that is 5%. This is the amount that will be used as the discount rate when we're calculating those present values. Now, we can ignore the lessee's incremental borrowing rate. Not relevant here. That would only be relevant if the lessee did not know the lessor's implicit interest rate. In that case, you would use the incremental borrowing rate as the discount rate. But we know the lessor's rate, so that's what we're going to use for discounting. Okay. Um, now, so we've got the payments. Now, and when we're calculating the present value of the lease liability, it's going to consist of two things. Okay, the hundred thousand, right? We got three payments of a hundred thousand. We need to take the present value of that. So you multiply it by two point eight five nine four one. Okay, this is the present value of an annuity due, and it's annuity due because the payment is made. The, the first payment is made on day one of the lease. So it's the present value of an annuity due of one dollar. Okay, given that we've got three periods and a rate of 5%. Okay, so that's what this is. So this times this, 285,941, that is just the present value of the three payments of $100,000. It's not the present value of all the lease payments. That's why I have here ignoring the residual value payment. Okay, so we got the present value of the 100,000, th uh, three payments of 100,000, but we also have the present value of the residual payment, okay? That's the 20 minus 5,000, that's that 15,000 shortfall I told you about. Okay, we discount it divided by 1.05 to the third, right? Because it's three periods, okay? So 12,958, this is the present value of that $15,000 shortfall, okay? In short, the lessee is expecting they're going to have to make this final payment of $15,000 to make the lessor whole for the fact that the, the asset had a value of less than what they had guaranteed. Now, we take the present value of those three payments of $100,000, which is this. Take the present value of that $15,000 final payment is the shortfall, which is this. Add those two together, you get the present value of all the lease payments, Okay, the nest investment in the lease. And this is going to be the initial measurement of our lease liability. So let's get to our lease amortization table. And you'll see that this 298, 899, bam, that is the beginning. That's our initial lease liability. We're going to use that uh, to track the lease liability all the way down to when it gets to zero. Okay. So I've got this also here too. Here are the calculations if, if you didn't quite follow that. All right. This is how we calculated the 298, 899. Now let's walk through this table. So we make, so we initially started 298,899 for the lease liability, but then the lease payment is made day one of the lease, so that reduces the liability to 198,899. Okay. Now, if we take that amount, 198,899, and we multiply it by our discount rate, five percent, that is going to give us 9,945, and that is the interest expense that is going to be accrued. By the lessee, December 31st, 2022. Now, remember, the lessee is also going to have to record depreciation expense. Okay. Now, I'm going to I'm trying to make this example really basic, so we don't have too many complications. 
I'm assuming here that in this example, the right of use asset, okay, when they originally record, remember, they don't just record a lease liability. The lessee also books an asset. So I'm assuming that that is equal to the lease liability. Why would that be the case? Well, there's no lease prepayments. Uh, there's no incentives received uh, from the lessor to the, you know, by the lessee. We're going to assume that there's none of that here. So the right of use asset in this example, but not always in real life, but in this example, uh, the right of use asset and the uh, lease liability are initially equal to each other. Okay. So to calculate the depreciation, assuming we use straight line method, we're going to take 298, 899 divide it by three because there's three periods in the lease term. So that's going to give us $99,633 in depreciation expense each period. Okay, we're using straight line here. And I already showed you how to calculate the interest expense. So the total expense recognized by the lessee in year one of the lease is going to be this plus this. We've got interest expense, we got depreciation expense added together. And that is the total amount uh, of the expenses. So that's the income statement effect for year one of this lease, okay? Now, notice, the, so let me make sure you can see this table. So for year two, the interest expense is gonna be 5,442. Why is it lower? Because now we are multiplying a smaller lease liability because the lease liability is coming down as payments are made. A smaller lease liability, 108,844, five percent okay? That gives us this. So that is going to be the interest expense for year two. Now. Note something, okay, note something. Because we have that final payment, so we have three payments of 100,000, but then that fourth, that residual payment, this is treated as a fourth payment. Even though the lease only call, calls for three payments of 100,000, this is that payment of, oh, well, when we give the leased asset back to the lessor, it, it's not worth 20,000, it's only worth five, and we guaranteed 20, so we gotta give them an extra 15, we gotta give them 15 grand in cash to make them whole. Okay, so that's why we have that extra payment here. And that's why, so we got the lease line, but so this times 5% is gonna be equal to this. That's how I calculate the interest expense here. I wanna make sure I don't just throw numbers at you, okay? And then ultimately the lease uh, obligation is zero, the lease liability is zero. Uh, when the, the, the lessee has returned the, the asset to the lessor and made that, that $15,000 payment. Okay, so when we look at our journal entries for year two, uh, we again, when, when there's another payment, second lease payment, lease liability goes down by 100,000, cash goes down by 100,000, and then as I said, we recognize interest expense. Remember, when you record the interest expense, the lease liability goes up, okay? Uh, but when you make payments, the lease liability goes down. Now, the depreciation expense, I said they're using straight line, so that's the same each period, okay? Now, our final period, we have interest expense, 714, okay, because the lease liability is lower, right? As the lease liability gets lower and lower, the interest expense occurred, uh, incurred, uh, accrued each period, it gets lower and lower as well, okay? So, finally, okay, finally, when all is said and done, if everything happens as expected, we say, that, oh, okay, at the end of the lease, let's say, in fact, all right, the residual value turns out to be 5,000, and so the lessee is going to make a, a, a payment of fifteen thousand to make the lessor whole. Hey, we guaranteed you twenty, but it's only worth five. Sorry about that. Here is fifteen thousand dollars. So the lessee is going to reduce their cash account by fifteen thousand, reduce their liability by fifteen thousand. The lease liability goes to zero. The lease liability, the right of use asset, will no longer appear on the statement of financial position for the lessee. And if you are wondering, well, what happens? What happens if the residual value at the end of the lease turns out to be like? 1,000. Like they were saying, oh, well, we think it's going to be five, but what if it's like 1,000? It's even lower. Then the lessee would uh, record a loss. So if the, if, the if the actual residual value turned out to be 1,000, and you say like, wow, that's even 4,000 lower than what we we're expecting, then the lessee would record a, a $4,000 loss. And then, of course, they'd have to give an additional $4,000 of cash uh, to the lessor. So they would basically record a $4,000 loss and then decrease cash by an additional $4,000.